did you know that menopause can affect the trillions of bacteria living in your gut? Research increasingly shows that menopause is linked to significant shifts in gut microbiome, especially a decline in friendly bacteria that support your hormone balance, digestion, and lots more. Being able to recognize when your gut microbiome needs support is key to managing many symptoms and maintaining your well-being throughout menopause. So let's talk about this. Gut microbiome consists of communities of bacteria which can influence many areas of your health, including hormone regulation. Certain gut bacteria produce enzymes which can reactivate and recycle estrogen. So this is called the estrobiome function. And this regulation helps to maintain the correct levels of estrogen and it helps to support your whole hormone balance throughout your body. So studies indicate that in the postmenopause, many women experience a drop in friendly bacteria and also the diversity of these friendly bacteria. So what are the signs that your gut microbiome is in imbalance and maybe your friendly bacteria need a little bit of extra support? So there's a number of signs and symptoms that are really good indicators that this is going on. So the first one is digestive problems. You may find that you start to get bloating, wind, constipation. So this is called gut dysbiosis. And very often it can just be very simple changes. You, you, you notice you're not going to the toilet so often. You're getting more gassy, um, more windy. You're maybe just getting a, a lot more discomfort, maybe even things like cramping. You can often maybe um, get diarrhea as well. And these friendly bacteria or a number of these friendly bacteria help to break down your food correctly. So you may not be absorbing what you need quite so well. And they also help to regulate bowel function. So all of these can have a big impact on your digestion um, and also the, the way that you feel about your digestion generally. Number two is fatigue and brain fog. You know, who would have thought that your friendly bacteria in your gut can cause brain fog? So the, there's, there's something called the gut-brain connection. So there, there is quite a relationship between the gut and, and the brain. So your friendly bacteria, or some of them, can produce neurotransmitters and fatty acids that help to support brain function. So what you may find here is that you may find that you're getting brain fog, you're getting memory issues, you're finding that you're getting poor concentration. And of course, we just blame the menopause for that, when in fact, it could actually be our lovely little friendly helpers in, in the gut. So number three is also inflammation. Some of the bad bacteria can um, lead to um, in inflammation and can trigger inflammation. So in this situation, it can be things like joint aches and pains, muscle aches and pains. It can be inflammation anywhere. I mean, even things like getting gum in inflammation um, may, may be part of, of the problem. So um, what we need here is, is to look at that issue. So again, joint pain tends to get blamed, oh, it's just arthritis or, or it's the menopause, when in fact it can be part of this gut biome um, dysfunction. It can also be weight gain and also difficulty in losing weight because, again, these friendly bacteria can help to improve our digestion of the good things that we need. They help with um, fat storage and they can help with the metabolism too. So again, if everything's out of balance, you may find that you're putting on weight a, a lot quicker. And no matter what you do, even if you exercise and eat well, that weight is not shifting. And number five, which is a really important one as well, is mood swings and anxiety. So 
the, the, we call the gut the second brain because as well as the brain, there are a huge amount of what's called serotonin receptors in the gut. And if these are not being supplied with um, the correct good feeling chemicals, that can have a direct link to what's going on in our brain. So we can get more mood swings, we can suffer from anxiety, and this can also be quite a big factor in depression as well. So what can you do to support your friendly bacteria? So especially in the menopause and post-menopause. So there's good news here. There is lots of really simple things that you can do on a daily basis just to support those uh, lovely little helpers. First thing obviously is diet. We need to look at plenty of fiber rich foods fiber especially plant fiber so not so much your breads and, and pasta and, and rice but plant fibers such as from your cruciferous vegetables things like your broccoli and your your onion and and your your other sort of green leafy vegetables they contain lignans which your friendly bacteria can break down and actually produce phytoestrogens from these so a really good diet full of all these dark green leafy veg and vegetables we are looking at good grain fiber so that would be your brown bread your brown rice and your brown pasta in moderation because they can sometimes cause bloating as well you're looking at something called fermented foods and you know this is a a sort of modern thing that's going on or fermented foods are great so you've got things like your kimchi your, um, your kefir and your sauerkraut so taken on a daily basis these fermented foods can help to support your friendly bacteria you can also add our molkazan fruit we've had molkazan for so many years i've been with the company for such a long time and it was already on the go when i started working here so molkazan fruit is a fermented whey drink that supports gut health. It also contains calcium, which is really good for supporting your, your general digestion. I've taken it for years, two teaspoons once a day in the morning helps me and, and my friendly um, little bacteria um, as well. Look at managing your stress. It's a really important one. Stress creates chemicals that, that can be um, quite harmful to the friendly bacteria. So again, just being in a state of stress can affect the, the balance of friendly bacteria in the gut. Stay hydrated, remember the water, it's always a, a, a really important one. And obviously limit processed foods, things like your high salt and high sugar foods can affect the friendly bacteria as well. And the other thing you can do maybe, I recommend maybe twice a year, just do a month and have a course of probiotics as well. So I hope this helps. Um, there's so much research coming out now on how our gut bacteria can affect the hormones, especially in the menopause and post-menopause. So it's a new area of research. I am so excited by it because it's another way that we can help ourselves feel better. So any of you tried any of these foods? Have you found that changing your diet has reduced your bloating? Has it made you feel better generally as well? Please share your stories. You know I'd love to hear all about them. Have a lovely week and I'll see you soon.